next on the docket we have this really funny interview with russ on the zz mill show i'm gonna say right is this it yeah the zz mill show where he basically details that somehow within his musical journey he somehow got himself into a deal where he signed for 20 was it he signed a deal for for sixty thousand. um but then in exchange, he had to give his record label 24 albums. Because you know, most likely, when, you're, when you sign a 360 deal, from what we've heard so far from other artists, the 360 deal usually encompasses like every kind of part of your earning potential, right? From st album streams to appearances to t-shirt and merch and stuff. And usually a condition of one of those deals where you get kind of a bit of money up front, like a loan, in order to kind of secure your signature and also to kind of allow you to make music, buy bits, whatever it may be, right? Um, they usually have a, a, a term in their stipulation that basically says this deal is basically for an x amount of albums and i guess the the clever bit with record labels why they say albums instead of singles is because it guarantees that whatever definition of albums they have whether it's 10 plus records it means that they're going to get sort of 10 plus songs it means that they're going to have to get a project that contains 10 plus songs from you before you can get out of your deal so it kind of locks you in place and most artists especially ones that have any kind of fit, you know artistic integrity it takes them probably more than a year to put one album together you maybe let's let's be you know let's be kind of um let's be loose with it and say 18 months in between albums so usually if someone signs a five album deal it's kind of a long deal that they're signing right it's probably going on to about 10 years before they can kind of get back to the negotiation table and maybe renegotiate or maybe look to buy themselves out or go to sign with somebody else so nowadays especially with the information that we have available out there people you know screaming even um russ's namesake the american russ talking consistently constantly about you know having to you know how you get how to make sure you don't sign a bad deal having um you know what's that thing called business literacy literacy or i don't really have one i'm speaking at the moment but being able to hire a business manager having somebody to come and look over your contracts not getting not using the same lawyer that a record label has because of course it's going to be a conflict of interest loads of things involved with it um but basically there's all that information's out there in the open you only have to kind of watch a few interviews of the breakfast club to kind of get an idea or what you should and shouldn't sign and how you should go into a record label deal so they really Really should be no sympathy being kind of lended to Russ's situation because he knowingly went and did it but I think the story and how he kind of talks about how he ended up in that situation makes it a lot more um makes it a lot more forgiving in that respect with you that if that makes any sense and I guess this is another aspect as to why it's so important as to how you I won't say address things but how you basically deal with things on social probably has a lot more to do with somehow your long-term kind of possibility of success in this game in general than your actual ability to make good songs and the fact that this guy can be a little bit self-deprecating um can obviously laugh at himself and doesn't mind participating in the meme it's probably going to account for him staying around longer in the scene than people that are far more talented than him that's got, that's basically my adage on it. So let's play a bit of the clip now and you can hear what he has to say about the whole deal. Right. Got a million views on the video. Then press play. Danny and Marcia and that, them man. They offered me a contract. In my head, I thought this was for like the song or something, can it? Ended up being for like 24 albums or something <laughs> stupid. <like that. laughs> what? I swear to God, like 24 albums. So I'm breezy like that. So basically, I'm <laughs> fresh off the road. Like, I'm still out here trying to do what I'm trying to do. I'm Wait, hearing... so they, they signed you for 24 albums? Yes. That's what, obviously, the back bit, or the little small, small thing or whatever. That <laughs> little black see, bit. That's what was there. Isn't it? So you didn't get anyone to read the contract? No. I was gassed. I just come off the road. I'm thinking, what? 30, basically, they offered me 60 bags. I'm thinking, what? For me to be rapping out of what, what, what shit that man does in that? And I was thinking, cool. Do you think that happens to a lot of artists that uh, these people take advantage of them? Of no, I wouldn't say it's taking advantage. The way I thought of it is, I'm out here, man's trapping and that. Well, I'm not even the big trapper, I'm a meaty trapper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like my little boxes there. And then I'm thinking, hold on, like, cool. Someone's offering me 60 bags, but these times, a man's got a, a friend, innit? A duo, when you, innit? That's when you, innit? So yeah. cool. I'm thinking, Cool, you lot offer me 60 bags, but what about man, man? Like, that's kind of sneaky. I said, cool, give us 30 each, innit? They was on it. I said, cool. Told my mum and that, told his mum, linked up. 
Imagine how happy that label was when he came back to the negotiation table and say, I want 30 each for me and my friend. They must have looked at each other, kicked each other on the table like, is this guy fucking retarded? They must have been so happy. People uh, got it. I was gas signed it off. Gave Mac D. I was got the peas and that. You get me? Gas. <laughs> bought a car. I bought a car the next day. I was Jesus gas. Christ. No, I'm capping. Not the next day. As soon as the peas the peas landed, I bought the car the next day. Right. Gas out here. Giving all my ups verbal. You know, I broke. <laughs> there, there, there. There, there, there. Out there, there. Then after, what happened after that? So cool. Press. Wait, oh, yeah. Like, so you, when did you find that? It was 24 albums. <laughs> that recently. <laughs> <laughs> not, not them times. <laughs> that. Definitely within like the last eight months or something. What? This yeah, guy's yeah, a legend, bro. This guy's now. a legend. It, we'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into wow. that. So cool now. Boom. Cool. That's all sweet. But surely, especially if you're in the music game now, surely financial literacy has to be at the front of your mind, especially just from an understanding of business, especially when it comes to specking out how you sort of lay out your career. But again, it's not, you know, it's not something that you should expect from all people. And there is something quite admirable to the fact that he is, you know, very open and upfront as to how much of a dunce he was and how much of a dummy he was and kind of, you know, open up to the fact that, hey, it wasn't that they kind of hoodwinked him into signing the shitty deal. It's the fact that he was in such dire straits prior to signing it. He didn't mind if they even, uh, I'm sure he would have taken 10 grand or 20 grand at a time. If you're going to take 30 each for, you know, having a, a song with a million hits on your, on flipping YouTube, he would definitely have taken 10 grand. He's basically saying that I was in such dire straits. I was just looking for any way out that wouldn't involve me having to be on the roads, you know, selling, you know, crack from the, crack off my flipping ass and he got given a way out and he basically snatched it and all in all again maybe he's not you know where he should be and his conscious situation might not, might not be where it should be in terms of business wise but in terms of the the difference and in terms of where he could have been if he didn't sign that deal this is still far out far out ways having to be on the streets and doing whatever he was doing on road in it so there is still kind of a silver lining in the story but it is interesting to see that this is still happening nowadays after everything that's occurred after all the information we have out there all the free resources all the crazy stories that have been read over there and again this probably maybe is another um indication another kind of insight into you shouldn't just assume people know stuff just because you've seen it maybe all those interviews and reviews and op-eds and you know rants and people that have been going on maybe you just missed it right if you're really plugged into the streets and you're doing your bits you're probably not keeping up to date with the latest breakfast club interview you're probably not caring what someone says on the fader magazine you don't give a crap right you're just doing your thing and keeping it moving you're definitely listening to podcasts i'll assume right selling on road and being yeah I, I, would, I would assume going on road and being on your bike and stuff you're not kind of tuning into podcasts and finding out what someone has to say about you know the ups and downs of their career you're just doing your thing so those labels can definitely pry on that and take advantage of this and going forward but god damn it man what a what an incredibly bad deal maybe the worst i've heard in a while because you hear about these bad deals from people that signed ones prior to the internet or prior to social media being the thing but to hear somebody like within this era right somebody that's current and somebody that kind of popped in the, within the last few years having to sign such a crappy deal knowing how much they could have for sure like if he just would have just you know from what i know f about youtube numbers if he was able to replicate um that hit that got a million views a few more times and maybe sign a couple of distribution deals and get his stuff on TuneCore, he probably would have been able to clear sixty thousand in a year himself without any assistance, without any loans or anything. He probably were to do that. But again, that would have required having to know how to upload things, where to go. It's just, it's a whole infrastructure. He probably has no idea what to do. So for sure, the label, you know, were able to present, hey, we've got a manager for you. We've got somebody who can do the videos, right? They give you a package that just makes sense, especially if you're somebody that has no idea how the industry works. You just want to perform your songs and keep it moving. But God damn, man, 60 grand for 24 albums is probably one of the worst deals I've heard in a long time. But hey, at least he's able to laugh at it. At least he's able to 